These are just kind of, <laughs> these are very protective for just in case type scenario. You want a cup? <laughs> Not that I have one or anything, but perhaps we could make shift to one real quick. Dang, I got that covered already, man. Oh, good. Glad to hear it. Super glad. All right. Maggie's also confused. <laughs> What's wrong? The fact you did it. What? Jacob? You're definitely taller than that fit. No, I'm not, Jacob. How can you be any taller? Look at it. Come over here. Climb up here, Jake. Climb up here and look. So we have a cold front coming in. I'm trying to hold this board up. I left my screw gun over there. I'm holding the board up with one hand. The wind is blowing against me. I'm really struggling trying to get my screw gun closer. I did not think about this. Maggie, dad needs help, baby. Jake left me. Jake left me. Oh, who knows why. If I walk away, this board is going to fall. I don't know how I'm going to get my screw gun over here to screw this thing in. I just wish... I wish you could see what I was having to do right now. I'm using my feet like this and I'm slowly pulling the screw gun closer to me. Look at this. Guys, the things a human body can do when forced to, I am so close. I am so very close. Maggie, if you would just... Now I am completely alone. This is, oh, I am right there. All right, I'm gonna slide down the board. I'm gonna reach over with my foot. There. Guys, look what I've done. I can't reach it. Finger, finger, ah, got it. Guys, look what I've done. Look what I've done. Look what you can do when you put your mind to it. All right, so what we got going today, he's mad. He should be happy, but he's upset that we we're taking over his pasture. Jake says, hold on a moment. I'm not sure why. Uh, he can't figure out how to start the, <laughs> he's never mowed with this tractor. Oh, you've never oh, mowed with this tractor. Lower it down a little bit, you're too high. Come here, Maggie. So what we're gonna do today is come by and we're going to, not too low, not too low, Jake. We're going to mow over all of these mounds of old hay, all these clusters of things like this. And we're gonna get this ground nice and leveled up and cleaned up. Then we're gonna come out with that harrow or the drag and drag it out nice and smooth and we're gonna get this place all cleaned up. We're gonna also fill in all of the holes that he's dug, and we're gonna get the pasture ready for these ostriches. Okay. All right, we're, we're creating more of a mess, I think, than what we're fixing. But it was level. If you see, it needs to be level at that ground all the way across, I think. I don't know. I'm not a landscaper. Alright, so here comes our delivery of wood, post, and all that we need. We're going to have him drop it in here. Alright, so we have a lot of work to do. Uh, we're going to have to reinforce a lot of our fencing, especially this side over here to make it taller. We're going to have to put corners on, uh, well, on all the corners. We're gonna have to round off our corners, as they call it. We will have to, of course, set everything in concrete. And uh, we only have a couple of days to get all this done to be ready for our, our new female ostriches. This pasture's cleaning up real nice. Though. All right, my friends, the time has come to get started. Well, my friends, the time has come. Raise the roof and have some fun. Throw away the work to be done. Wait, wait a minute. We're actually about to start working. 
And uh, what we're gonna do here is we have to taper off this corner. Now, I'm gonna explain something to you and it might be hard for you to grasp or comprehend if you're not a part of the animal kingdom. And even though you're all saying, Lester, I am a part of the animal kingdom. Humans are animals. Yes, you're right. Except we are very refined. And it's not, it's probably not been your husband's tradition to chase you into a corner. And once he pins you in a corner, and does whatever he wants to do to you. I would hope, what's he laughing about? I would hope that is not, uh, all right, kill it there, Drake, lower it down. That's good, go ahead and kill it. So, what I just explained to y'all in layman's terms is exactly what's gonna happen whenever Carl meets his lady friends. Uh, and that's just part of the game. You see, everyone plays games. Jake, tell me some games that girls have played with you. Just keep it family, but have have you ever noticed that sometimes girls play a mating game? There's a game. Ladies and guys, they, guys, they do. They play mating games with each other. Hey, Trudy. And so in the bird species, uh, what's going to happen is Carl is going to... So here's our plan. We're going to let the females into this pasture. Carl is going to come running from when, over there. <laughs> He's going to get up in here. We're going to open the gate for him. And once he gets in, let the games begin. It's going to be fun to watch and scary. But at some point, Carl's going to begin to outmaneuver one of the other. And he's going to get one caught in the corner. And if you're not very careful, when you put the pound, the weight of a 300, 300 pound bird up against this fence... And then you have the weight of another 300 pound bird full of testosterone <laughs> pressing up against that first one. That's when bad things happen. That's when bad things happen. And so the ostrich people that we've been talking to have says, you have to go and round off your corners. Don't give your birds a corner to that where that can happen. But, uh, all we need to do is reinforce our corners and round them off. So that's what we're gonna do right now. Carl, this is for you, buddy. He's like, wait a minute. I know what you're doing. I've seen this before. My life's about to get very interesting. Yee-hee! Okay, I don't think Carl's actually saying that. <laughs> what do you think Carl's saying? I don't know if his voice sounds like that neither. <laughs> well, how do you think Carl sounds? He's like a... Like a let's just hear it. Don't like say a... what you think. Just Let's hear it. Oh, you guys think them corners are going to stop me from pinning her down in there? I'm going to get her anyway. sounds like Marge Simpson. <laughs> hey, Homer. All right, I don't know what Carl's thinking, but uh, we're going to do this. we got to get started. All right, so what we want to do before we concrete our post in is make sure that the angle of the post is running like this over here so that when we put our two by six up it angles and it can bolt up smoothly from the flat surface of the post once we get this first board put up to know that we're right we'll put our third post in the ground right here which will give us a whole lot of support on all of this perfect All right, so there is one corner. That's a rounded corner. So they call it a rounded corner. So as that female ostrich comes running down through here and she gets this spot over here, instead of her getting stuck in a corner, she'll just make the turn and keep going that way over there. And so it'll go around and around and around. And so she finally, she will not succumb until she's ready to. She's not gonna be forced to. Put that up there again. No, it's Put it up there again. This is what I get. When I let Jake measure. Look at this. Look at that. No, it's not. Give me the tape measure. Jacob. No, it is. It really is. Listen, you're wasting lumber, son. No, this has to be eight foot. How could you? Don't look yet. Oh, my. Hold on. What, what are you doing? What happened? So, we just now wasted an entire signal. Well, we still have this half. 
How did you not get <laughs> Oh, that's why I've not let him use my power equipment because he hasn't no. passed the certification yet on how to measure. We just oh, wasted so that board. So this over here is just kind of a precautionary thing. We're afraid that if Carl comes running the female up along here, they may end up getting pinned back behind that tree. So we're gonna go ahead and put a little roundabout here from this tree as well. We don't think the screws are gonna hurt the tree at all. And we're gonna do the same thing from this side. So there's no way that a female can get pinned up behind that tree in the fence there and get themselves hurt. So this is our last corner. So we've done all four corners and the tree. This looks good. And uh, it's been, it's exciting. This is gonna be a great pasture. Look, they have plenty of dirt for their little dirt baths. We're gonna keep it raked nice and pretty. We're gonna come back in a few minutes and we're gonna pick up all of the little pieces of trash that we raked up today. Well, good morning, folks. Uh, it is Friday here, and we are one day out of going after our new ostriches tomorrow. Jake and I are gonna continue on our fencing today. Uh, I'm afraid, though, as I look up, the sky is pretty cloudy, and there's a cold front coming in. I'm hoping we can get this job done before the rains because no matter what, we have to finish this today. This job has to get done today, today. And because uh, tomorrow we'll be traveling. All right, so when we built this pasture, we made sure that we built a really tall six foot fence around the entire thing. Well, three sides of the pasture because we knew I'm breathing hard it would have to contain Tex, you know, our big longhorn bull. But this one side over here, for cosmetic reasons, we kept it short. We never thought that Tex would have a reason to try to push through into this pasture, so we did not take as much time in uh, making it bullproof. Well, now that we're gonna have ostriches inside this pasture, we have to go ahead and raise this fence over here up to six foot. So what I thought that we would do is, Instead of taking all this down and redoing it all, we're gonna go ahead and just add post along through here. I've been digging these holes, waiting for Jake to come help me. And then we're gonna take and run this two by six at this six foot mark and come straight on down. So it will give it the height that we need. Then we can also come by and just maybe reinforce right along through here. That will uh, make it strong enough so that in case the ostriches do end up pushing their way around up alongside this fence, it's not gonna be a problem. And uh, that will give us a good solid six foot fence all the way around this thing. The worst thing about having any lumber delivered is that sometimes the guys that load the lumber do crap like this, and I hate this. I like McCoys, you know? We've, we've done a lot of business with McCoys, but why in the world would they allow someone to load this kind of lumber it's cracked it's uh this is not a quality four by four it's rotten i not rotten maybe but it's not a quality four by four and then these over here if you notice the ends are all jacked up that's cracked all the way up it so we're using the bucket to kind of help us along a little bit Jake's going to drive up along through here and as he drives along the fence I will unload them as we're gonna need them. like you know i'm going to push a girl right over that right you know i'm going to push my girls right over that and carl i don't think you can 
because no. that thing is six foot tall. Actually, Jake, I'm six foot one. Tell me, video me real fast. I'm straight up to it. So it's actually it's six, six foot exactly. Wait, you're six one. I'm six one, and I feel like it's right above my head. No, it's under your head. No, it's here, Jake. No, the top of your head is above it. No, it's. Give me the camera. <laughs> well, I'm show. I'm looking. You're looking at it from a downward angle. You're taller than that. I'm backed up to it. How am I taller than that? Yeah. Hold on. Look, Jacob. Jacob? You're definitely taller than that fin. No, I'm not, Jacob. How can you be any taller? Look at it. Come over here. Climb up here, Jake. Climb up here and look. Carl, stop it. Looking good. <laughs> he has no idea what's about to happen the next couple of days. So I like that we still have our little fence over on their side. And so they're not going to be anywhere up against this new fence where we're going to have Carl and his ladies. It's a very big day. Get the coffee going because we're tired. I'm tired. Jamie's not awake yet. I'm going to go get her up. I'm excited. It's a hard, it's hard to sleep last night. Oh, she's going to be mad. Good morning, sunshine. Today we make somebody's Christmas dream come true. Oh my God, you're recording. I am recording. But that means we have to drive four hours to get them. And drive back four hours. So we got to get going. I got coffee started. <sighs> I know how you're going to do if I leave the covers on you. I know what you're going to do. I'm not getting back up. You you're not getting up. I hear it. Get up. Well, we are about halfway there. Just stopped and filled up. Had to get a. We had to, we had to uh, fuel refuel. Up. We had to fuel <laughs> up. Literally, uh, we got a little juicy here, a little gas station and a McDonald's here together. We're gonna continue our journey. We will continue on on the road again, Jamie. Let's hear on you the sing road it. Again. Hold on, let me start because then you could take over. Okay. <clears throat> on the road again. Just can't wait to get on the road again. Something, something, making music with my friends. I just can't wait to get back on the road again. <laughs> there we go. So check this out. We are four hours from the house, okay? Guys, this is the Texas Hill Country. Uh, number one, it's freezing here. It has dropped 20 degrees from when we left the house. It was 70, and right now out of the truck, it's 50. I want you to notice the hills though and uh, the roads that we're driving along going up and down through these things that i brought with me uh it's kind of funny but it's not funny i don't know exactly what i'll have to be faced with today so just in case i did bring the riot shields uh i did bring my little swatty spanky stick that i was gifted recently I have some grapes for treats. Uh, I do have one thing that you don't know about me and Jamie. One of my favorite things about a road trip. Jamie, show them how we do it. She feeds me Fritos and bean dip. And if they don't have regular original Fritos and bean dip, the entire road trip is ruined. It's true. 
it's ruined. True. It's true. Yep. Only we, the original. Yeah, we don't stop at fast food for the most part. No, we have to stop for gas, Fritos, and bean dip. Key yeah. to life. So I roll. <laughs> so we are definitely not in Houston anymore. This is what they call the Texas Hill Country. And I think you can see why. What's crazy is not only is the land, the terrain different, but look at the vegetation. No more pine trees. You got these real short shrubby type, some kind of an evergreen. I don't know what these are. You don't see hardly any oak trees. For sure no pine trees. Is that juniper? Do they I, call those juniper I trees? I think it is. That's what it looks like. I was just gonna say it's not it's not Christmas tree. I don't know what it is. It's a We've shrub. also seen a lot of cactus. There's cactus, lots and Tons lots of, of cactus. Ground cactus. They don't go barefoot in these parts. No, you do not walk around barefoot <laughs> in these parts. Well, I can't say for sure, <laughs> but I think we might be getting close. And that's their little male ostrich. And you know that by his colors. Jamie, look how tall his fences are. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that's like a 10 foot tall fence. Carl's a lot prettier than him. Seriously, Carl, I'm not. So in case you're wondering what a real ostrich farm looks like, this would be it. Now, the thing is, Jamie, I see a combo of males and females all in there together. So we are still traveling alongside of this guy's driveway and there's more ostrich. Look at this. <laughs> there's so many. There's just a combo of males and female everywhere. So I guess it is. It's that time of year where there's no breeding going on. So there's no, no, no males are going to be fighting. So for anyone that might be wondering, I want you to notice how small the pastures are. Uh, there's not a whole lot of grass content. And for every male, they have three ostriches or three females. So here, for example, Jamie, I don't know if you can see from where you're at. So put your window back down a lot. So there's the male. I'm going to try to zoom in. So there's the male with probably his main female. They call it the head female. Maybe. And then oh. there's two more females over there. And then as you get to the next pasture, same thing. Right along this side of the fence, the black one is the male. And then there's one, two females. And there's this third, third. right over here. So that is the normal, that's the norm for how they want, I guess it keeps the perfect balance. One male for every three three females. But what I like is the, the, the pastures are only about just not even a quarter of the size of our pasture. Yeah. There's the male and then there's the one, two, three females. Pretty good. Whoa. That was almost like it was a camera. Like that was impressive actually. Impressive. All right, can I get in there with you and help you push them You're through? You're welcome. You'll come around this, this top door. Oh boy. Grab them and pull them in, or just try to run them in. Let me, let me show you what I'll do with the first. Right, so we're gonna take and just kind of handle and get right in. There we go. All right, that looked easy enough. All right, you want me to come hold one, or you want me to push them in? Um, actually, yeah, you'll keep them in there from coming. Okay. Coming around, around. Now we'll bring them hold on, love. Can I come in here with you? Back up. Back up. Head down, head down. Good girl, come on. That's two. Stay in here, ladies, stay in here. Stay in here, babies. No kicking, no kicking. <laughs> here's our rescue right here. Look, here's our little rescue baby. Oh my goodness, what a good girl, what a good girl. What a good girl, okay. 
Oh, we're going to leave the band on her? It's up to you. That's like I said, I, I kept it on her because she was the one I knew that fell in the ice. That's how yeah. I knew who she was. Uh, oh, Y'all call her the Icebird? The ice yeah. And of course, there's no trip. Uh, complete. Complete. You can, yeah, without stopping at the world famous Bucky's. Come on, buddy. It's part of, it's part of our lives, babe. I don't think most people know the magnitude. Guys, this is double pumps. Oh, no, no, hold on. It's not double, it's double two. Head southwest toward North Third Street. North Look at all the gas side. pumps, Jamie. This is crazy. And there's people at every one of them. And there's people at every one of them. All right, so I'm making some observations as we sit. Let me start with Wanda from Waco. Wanda is our rescue. She's the one who was the, the freebie in the, don't do that, Wanda. Wanda, uh, Wanda from Waco is our rescue. So she was the little freebie. She was the one that made the whole trip possible. Well, it has been a 12 hour day. We left at five, we're getting home at five. Like almost to the minute. And looky here, Carl has no idea what we have in the back of this trailer yet. And I'm surprised, I thought he'd be able to smell them because I know they have an amazing sense of smell. We're going to circle around. Carl's eye, his head did just perk up. This is gonna be really funny, Jamie. I'm gonna circle around and so Carl can kind of like get a glimpse of them. This is gonna be so funny. Oh my goodness, Carl. This is gonna be so very funny. So we're trying to beat the dark here. The uh, tra uh, the truck is too big to fit in this little small section and we can't get things backed up. So we're gonna switch out with the tractor, which makes it a whole lot more maneuverable. Straight back. Can you go that way, Jake? Can you go that way a little bit? So, yeah, this is the pasture they're going to be let into right now. Whenever they come through, we're going to close this gate over here. And then we'll walk out and we'll talk more about it. Okay, here we go, guys. Everyone ready? All right, so we're going to go real gently here. It may, they may come running, so y'all be ready. Come on, ladies, follow me. Let's go. Come on, ladies. Come on, babies. Come on, sweet girls. Come on, sweet girls. Come on. Come on, Debbie. Okay, well, I'm scared now officially. Oh, I know. They're amazing. 
Look at how she's looking at me. Okay, so I can tell you from the back side, Jake, if you walk over here, I'll show you who's the most unhealthy. So obviously, Wanda has been injured, but even though she's injured, she's the healthy because they've had her isolated. Now, these two ladies over here have not been. Look at their back size, how skinny their behinds are. Yeah. Can you see the difference over here? Mm -hmm. So both Tina, this is Tiny Tina from Texarkana, and that's Debbie from Dallas. They're both quite a bit skinnier and actually a little bit malnourished. You see how small they look? Yeah. Their back size should be big. <laughs> this is how they should be, nice and thick, like this. That sounds probably kind of bad. I was like, uh, let's see. They should have a that's nice good. Thick backside. I'm not sure. <laughs> that's but good. That's like a that's, that's a that's a man's butt right there. That's a, that's a man's booty. That is a man's booty. Because I believe once they kind of get their way around, they may not let us touch them a whole lot. Here, I'll, okay, look, give me your camera and I'll video you for a minute. Go ahead. This is really exciting. Now, these are females. These are not near as aggressive as what the red ostrich that Carl is. There you go. Everyone tries to, at some point, you'll discover who you like more than the others. <laughs> oh, I feel bad that uh, Debbie is so tall and skinny. Look at Debbie does, da Debbie's, uh, sorry. Debbie's <laughs> from <laughs> Dallas. Her neck is so long and skinny. Yeah. Guys, so I'm gonna tell you right now, they're not gonna look this way for long. We are going to fatten them up and we are going to just pour the feed to them and we're gonna make some really, really nice looking birds here. I know that you all want to see Carl and you want to see how that goes, but we're going to keep Carl off for a while. We need to, to get them to adjust to their environment and to their new yard. I don't, they, listen, they, their, their legs are still wobbly because of the are, ride. Like, they really they have their sea day. legs. They do. They've had a really, really long day. So they're, they have a nice big pasture. For those of you that saw our video, when we first got there, Jake, their, their, their pasture was about the size of our corral. And it was for four birds, one male, three females. And they had multiple of those set up. And he had 700 ostrich. Oh my 700. And they were all in small little pastures. Now there were some that were herd that were grazing, but all of his breeders, breeders were all pastured off like that in very small pastures. They have a really nice setup here. What are you thinking, ladies? You're just hungry. Yep. I'm going to feed you right now. It's been a really long day. I want to show you real fast kind of the setup. Uh, so we're going to close this gate over here so they can't come back out the way they came. We did leave some hay for any kind of nesting. We have water being filled up right now. Jake cleaned it nice today, and it is spotless. It was clean. All they need is a small place to drink from here. They don't need the whole access to the corner. We've come by, and we've put up nice high fencing so right now they're not going to be uh they're just probably curious i don't think they've ever heard a turkey they've never seen a billy goat or anything else there's a there's a lot going on right now there's a big two-ton bull next door to them they can see the horses walking the fence line in the back pasture so they have a lot they have to think about that's why we're not going to let carl come up for for at least three days give them a chance to kind of get familiar with everything learn the pasture learn where their water's at learn where they eat and learn the babies learn the smells learn not to be threatened by things like that or <laughs> things like this <laughs> Boy, please. or sounds like that or annoying things like that anyway what a really neat addition to the farm and like I said, it was right here. Wanda got the whole thing started. Wanda from Waco. We've been talking about her for a very long time uh, amongst to each other. None of you guys know this, but it was just kind of something that we were hoping that we could work out. And uh, we ended up working two more into the deal. And we'll talk a whole lot more about that over time. All right, this is the behind the scenes. I know it was a long video but I hope it was worth the wait. And just, just wait till we introduce Carl the next couple of days. So it's about 11 and uh, the babies, <laughs> it's night number one and they have not really moved from that spot right there. They've kind of huddled together. I see Tina is on the far right and then Debbie 
is I can't really tell exactly. I believe this is Debbie on the far left. And right there in the middle would be Wanda. Hey, sweet girls. I'm going to walk out and just see you know, how they are. Um, I want to give them time to adapt, but I don't want them to be scared either, you know. Hi, babies. I'm not going to shine the light right in their faces. I'll shine the light on kind of the ground here in front of them. Hi, ladies. I want to see, and then they have not touched their food yet. They have not touched their food. Do you guys feel like eating? You know we have food. I brought some food. I'm going to take this one bowl over and drop it a little bit closer to them. Listen, I have food. It's really good. Y'all want a bite to eat? Listen, I know you're scared, but you don't have to be. I'm Lester, and I love you. I was right. that I was right. So this is Debbie. And then we have Wanda here in the middle. And then Tina. Tina's kind of tiny. Tiny Tina from Texarkana. <laughs> Ladies, hey, here's some food. Look, look. Here, babies. Here, look. Look. Yeah, there's the blue. Look, right there. I'll walk away. Y'all need to eat, though. You guys really do need to eat. Okay? All right, I don't want to keep pestering them uh, the food will be here if they choose to have any maybe they'll get a little more comfortable we left we left all of the bigs in the back tonight i didn't want to have the horses and donkeys and the cows right here along the fence adding more stress to them you can't really stop the littles they're walking the fence lines they're very curious all right we will come back in the morning first thing and see how their first night went